okay, so, you know, extremely proud of our players. Uh, you know, before I go to that, let me address something. Because kind of like I feel like I'm hard on our players, I'm hard on our coaches, we set high standards around here. And at times I've been hard on our fans, okay? You know, for them to show up today um, after us losing last year and I guess set the record for highest attendance in school history for a game, and we say do things better than they've ever been done before is a motto we have. Um, that's awesome to hear that. And you could feel it in the game. You certainly could feel it in the fourth quarter. Um, it was really, really neat to have that electric environment. So um, first off, thanks for that. Second off, credit to our players and coaches. Um, you know, and I'm not that guy that's, okay, well, we went a one-score game. But a lot of stuff happened there, you know. Um, we're down two scores in the fourth quarter to what I'm going to say, it's got to be arguably the best personnel offensively in the country, or at least top two or three. I mean, that's offensively personnel like Alabama a couple years ago. You know, those two receivers, the line, the tight end. And, and Logan played like a real NFL back today. So, um, I don't know the years of them, but I hope those two receivers, obviously with the quarterback, are gone to the first round of NFL draft and don't see them again. So, um, you know, we gave up a lot on defense today. But again, my storyline is this, not all the points and everything in the yard. It's down two scores in the fourth quarter, easy to give in, you know, not fluke plays. Guys had to drive the length of the field twice, had to stop them, then stop them again, um, which we did. I mean, they threw it to us and we dropped an interception or the game's over and we still overcame that. So we're just really proud of these guys um, for overcoming adversity in the game and the week. You know, they took a lot of heat um, this week for the performance last week in Alabama. Um, and that's good. The standards have changed around here. You know, that um, they're supposed to beat Alabama. And they took a lot of heat, especially offensively, and um, really went back to work and, uh, and, and ran the ball really well today. So I don't know how many times you have 700 yards of offense without turning the ball over or having a sack. It's pretty amazing um, by the assistant coaches, but, but the players too, because they, they made the plays, and they made a lot of them today. All right, Reggie, if you have a question, bring the mic to you. Lane, what can you say about uh, Jackson's performance tonight, uh, especially after, after last week and, and having to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with what well, he said, one of the nation's best. Yeah, I think, um, you know, Jackson kind of fits in what I'm saying about the team probably more than anybody as far as, like, all the heat, the criticism, um, how he played in Alabama, can he play in big games, all that. Um, and to come out and just play, I mean, really, really play amazing. I mean, you're 26 to 39, four touchdowns, no interceptions, 389 yards, and then you put another – 50 yards on the ground for another touchdown in those sacks, which he got out of a couple, especially the really one, the one to Q was amazing. So a lot of quarterbacks, a lot of years, a lot of games, and you're down two scores, and you don't take the team and lead them like that. So I actually was trying to yell to Trey, which is why if you probably watch on our last touchdown, you're probably not understanding why the head coach is not happy because we're trying to signal to get him to go down, and we got the signal in late. Because um, when the ball ever breaks in that situation, we're playing that offense, those type of offenses. We want to go down at the one, let the clock run all the way down, and kick the field goal, um, you know, to win, so that we wouldn't have to go back on defense against those guys. But it worked out. You've heard me say you never know why things happen. If we did that, our defense wouldn't have been able to end on such a great note of stopping them like that. Kind of touched on it there at the end of your answer, but just your thoughts on the offense as a whole is kind of composure in that last scoring drive from, you know, penalties setting them back and, and what they had to kind of overcome that, that drive. Yeah, I think, you know, the whole frustration of last week with Alabama, um, not a good offense game plan, as good as we'd want it to be. It didn't work, so third downs. But, you know, I was just really frustrated because we had that chance to go beat them and we weren't full strike. And I've been saying this number nine, when he is playing, he's played eight, where he's been healthy eight series before. Seven touchdowns, one field goal. He got five of the touchdowns. So this guy is an electric receiver in our system. So that was why I was kind of down because he was he couldn't do anything in the game a week ago. And so now he's probably 90%, which is amazing for him to do what he did today at that. And Priest Corn in his second time playing the game here. Um, you know, 
just really was excited to be back at full strength, which we were not last week. You kind of answered my first question about when you dropped to a knee on Harris's score. I knew you were trying for him not to score. What was the ensuing, I don't know, 30 seconds or so of game time like for you watching that when they get down to the 16-yard line? It's obvious they're going to have some shots at the end zone. Yeah, that ain't 30 seconds. That was about 15 minutes worth. Because um, remember, we got to like go for two, have that. Because two point really wasn't a big deal, but you got to go for two, not one. And actually, I had a lot. We were throwing in it, and the last second, I said, whoa, 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 and changed to a run. Because the only bad thing that could really happen in that is throw an interception to the other way, and now they can kick a field goal to beat you. So that's actually why I changed it last second to a run. <sighs> um, just a lot because now I have this whole kickoff to go through it. I got a whole defensive thing, and the whole time I'm like, God, if I cut, just could have got that signal in one second earlier. Now, devil's advocate, you can miss the field goal from the one, but um, so that was hard to live with through that if we would have lost for sure. So, but again, things happen for a reason. We wouldn't have had that crazy ending right there. Um, and the defense needed some confidence because we didn't play very well today at all. And so to stop them when we needed it the most was good. When you were asked uh, specifically earlier in the week about the issues about the offensive line following Alabama, talking about that unit needing to improve, to see them not give up a sack, have so many hundred yards in offense, but not only that, just the balance that was shown offensively today. Just what can you say about that unit? Uh, I got to give them a lot of credit. I've been hard on them. Um, and they performed really well today. They took the challenge. I think that um, I tell you when I think we don't, our game plans don't work. But um, they did today. I thought we had a very unique one with Perkins. I guess he has to come back next year or so. We won't get into what that was exactly, but um, we, we, we've we never game planned around a person like that as much as we did today. And if you watch it, you can kind of figure out how much stuff's different plays are run based off of where he's at. And, and it neutralized his impact plays. Just coming into the game, did it feel like the most pressure you've had internally to win a game at Ole Miss? Hmm, I don't really think like that. Um, I, I put a lot of pressure on myself all the time. Um, I was really disappointed. I mean, I saw Keith after the game in Alabama apologize to him. Um, we should have won that game, so I take that on myself. So I don't, I'm hard enough on myself to say this is the game you got to win or any of that. Um, I'm really proud of our players. That's not an easy team to beat because they can make impact plays on defense because they have two special players and probably the best defense player in America. I said it all week, the hardest to prepare around and um, to do that. And then you saw the offense. That's like playing Alabama a couple of years ago. Alabama had four first rounders. And maybe they got two. So that was tough. Quinshawn Jenkins today, coach. Uh, 33 carries, 177 average, 5.4. Best game of the season. And uh, you leaned on him heavy uh, going 33 carries. What was the thought process there? And uh, what are your thoughts on Quinshawn tonight? Um, I thought he did. A, he really battled. He actually got an IV at one point in the third quarter, so he was out. I thought Bentley ran extremely well um, in between, and then Quinshawn came back out and and really um, played with a different mentality. Nothing against before, but different mentality today. You know, like big game mentality. Like he had a really big game a year ago against these guys, and so it was great to see. And you know. I mean, I've been on Charlie all year to run the ball more, you know, so he finally ran it more. It's a joke. Um, but, no, everybody wants to run the ball. Well, I was trying to tell you, we run the ball when it works. When we're two yards of carry at half, we don't run it a lot. Well, today was different. There was success, and now that's why you got 49 carries um, in a game that we could have thrown all the day, too, because we had, they had struggling secondary, major struggling, major issues in the secondary. You were able to run the ball effectively today. Like you just mentioned, you had over 300 yards on the ground. What did you see in LSU's defense to allow you to run the ball so effectively today? Mm, I just thought, you know, that Florida State game, just saw some things in there, especially how they played late in the game and really challenged our guys to play really physical, aggressive, and see what happens if you play physical against this defense. And because um, I thought Florida State did. And look at the fourth quarter, how Florida State pounded the ball on them in the fourth quarter and moved the ball late. So you kind of read between the lines what I thought we were gonna, was going to happen. We'll take questions up top. 
Lane, um, in, in the second half, LSU went on a 28-6 to six run, and then you guys ended it with a 21-7 to seven run to kind of close it out and dominated that fourth quarter. What does it kind of say about your guys that you were, you know, LSU got back in the game, but you guys were able to kind of end it so strong. What does it say about your team? Well, I figured when they made that run, you probably, like, announced on Twitter we were going to lose the game, and it was already over probably. <laughs> and then you jumped back on the bandwagon after Jackson made those plays, but... I'm just kidding. Um, I only pick on people I like. There you go. So I, I just really was like, you know, at one point, I'm like, we're going to have to score every drive and we're going to have to score touchdowns. You know, I'm a realist about what's going on. And then we got off there and had the field goal drives. And then we saw so now we're going to have to stop them on defense. So we were down two scores and got the touchdown. I'm still down. They scores and it's still down two, two, and um, you know go down and score again. So yeah, it, it was big for both sides of the ball to have to have the last four series game to have to make significant plays. The defense had two stops, the offense had two touchdowns. So that's as good as you can do in those situations in the fourth quarter. We'll keep it up top. And uh, what were kind of the emotions right when kind of the, the game ended and everyone was kind of rushing the field and, and all that kind of kind of sunk in for you? Yeah, it was it was real. Um, to see the look on the player's face, and Cedric was the first one next to me, like hugging as soon as that play was over, you know, like, and then Jackson. And um, we have some really cool kids, really neat kids that, um, again, had a really hard week and went into a really hard place to play a week ago. It, teams don't win very often in there, but, you know, I think they were 56 and 2 or something. And this was a hard week, like I said. A lot of criticism, which is which is good. You can use it the other way, and they internalized it, and they worked harder in practice. I'm not just saying that because they scored a lot of points. They practiced a lot harder this week, and so sometimes those losses help you. Lane, at the very end of the the game, I think it was right before the final play. There's the timeout. What do you say in the huddle? Is it just talking about the play? Is it trying to calm the guys down? What kind of conversation goes on? I'm there? saying, please don't get pi. Please just knock the ball down and do not get pi. Um, Keep it in front of you. Don't go for an interception. Do not get P.I. and just knock the ball down um, is what I was saying. Lane, Dave I'd kind of given up on the interception thing at that point because he had just thrown the ball right to us and we dropped it. So I was just like, just knock it down. No P.I. Lane, David Edelstein from WJTV in Jackson. Um, you know, what do you tell your team after this now so that they – keep those lessons going into the next games with a long schedule. I just reflect on last year where you said, you know, the season didn't end the way you wanted it to with those four losses. So how can you use something like this to keep that momentum going and, and show what this team's about? Well, I challenge them. No disrespect to last year's team, but I said, okay, the last two years, we were eight and one to play Alabama here. I had a chance to beat them go nine to one. We lose to Alabama. We let that like completely affect us when we fall apart, we lose the rest of the games, I think. Two years ago, our team that was very close, very tight, went into Alabama and got smoked. It was like 42-7. We scored two garbage touchdowns at the end. And they got smoked by Alabama. We were three, you know, going in there at the time, just like this team. That team rallied, went ten and two and went to the Sugar Bowl. So you make the choice. Which team are you going to be? So I hope they answered that today. You're welcome back down here. Lane, you mentioned the, the disappointment of last week. You said you didn't think you coached as well as maybe you could in that game. How did you make sure that that result didn't linger going forward? Well, I'm just really hard on myself. So um, when we lose and especially perform poorly on offense, you know, I take that really, really hard. Um, so it's not like went and did all this crazy different stuff. Like I say, sometimes the game plans work, sometimes they don't. And sometimes in game, if our system, we have to get going. We have to make first downs. And, and when we have success early, usually, um, it's going to be a really good day. If we don't and the play count numbers are down and there's three and outs or turnovers, that's when we're going to struggle. So it wasn't this massive change or anything like that. Um, I just thought, first off, we got all our players back. That helped. Um, and then they performed really well. And they did a really good job in game of running different plays than what we had done previous because they were really, I mean, not a bad word. They were, they were basic in what they were doing on defense. So 
it allowed us, if you saw, a lot of the times he's ch he's changing the play. We're changing the play at the line of scrimmage to get into advantage plays, and I thought that helped us a lot. Lane, you were talking a lot uh, this week about getting back to the Ole Miss identity. Um, what, was this win, in your mind, reflective of what you want the Ole Miss identity to be? Uh, this was like our COVID identity right here. We can't stop anybody. If you, no, I did not I didn't want that part. I wanted the part of balance on offense and 700 yards and 80 plays with high play count, 80 plays, 700 yards, no turnovers, no sacks. I mean, that's as good as you can perform, really. So, yes, I like that. I don't want to get back into this defense we've seen here before. Um, so we got to get that fixed because here comes a great quarterback coming in this week. Coach, how much did the uh, Caden Priestshaw on coming back? So I caught a couple of passes, blocked a lot. How much did it have to do with the running attack today getting a lot better? I think a lot. He's a very big physical NFL tight end. Um, you know, our other guys were more kind of like receiver project guys, you know. Um, this is more of a every down NFL tight end guy. So I think for sure you saw that in the run game. All right. Thanks, Coach. We'll have All right. Thanks. Thank you.